ease off of automation. The autoresponders have to go. The first attempt to read somebody cannot be automated. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Level Up podcast with myself, Greg Harrelson. This is where I focus on taking you from agent to entrepreneur. As you know, I have a passion for developing agents. And on today's episode, I'm going to share another quick strategy on how you can increase your production. I'm going to be real, so you be ready. Let's level up. Hey, everybody, it's Greg Harrelson here with the Level Up Podcast, and I've got a great guest, great friend, great business partner, Abe Safa, with me. He is my business partner in our coaching entity, Real Estate Sales Solutions. If you've never heard about Agent Success Academy, Google it right now. You definitely want to check out Agent Success Academy. But Abe and I are going to be discussing today online lead conversion and the challenges that we're having, because I hate to say it, but I want to say it, and that is it just got tougher. So you need to listen to this episode today day because I can assure you the conversion ratio from online capture to online connection, meaning you talk to them, that number is going to start going down in our industry, which means the price per lead talk to is going to drastically go up. And there could be people really concerned about the cost of leads uh, online, and they could actually start bailing out on some of their budgets. But we're going to address all that earlier or, or, or later on in the podcast. First, Abe, thank you for, on short notice, um, being here with me this morning. I know you weren't uh, prepared for that, uh, but I kind of think that that makes some of the best podcasts. So, but thank you for being here. Yeah, my pleasure, Greg. Good conversation to have today. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's been, very, uh, it. it's been very heavy on my mind. So if I can, Abe, I want to kind of set up why this is a conversation right now. Why, why is this subject even appearing? So I do have websites like a lot of real estate agents have, and I have uh, many different websites. And in every website, in every CRM that I am a part of and that I know of, meaning I know people that are like, I'm not a Boomtown user, but I have friends that are Boomtown users. And this is not that Boomtown is good or bad or Real Geeks is great or not great. I'm just saying they're all CRMs, they're all IDXs, and I'm hearing that there's a problem no matter which CRM that you're using. And that, and here's the problem. The problem is, is deliverability. The deliverability of emails has gone down. The deliverability on text has gone down. And what we've been in a situation of is we knew email deliverability has decreased over time because the emails that we're sending out are being marked as solicitations or spam so they don't get delivered or they get delivered straight into spam uh, folders. So we gravitated or we really rushed to texting our leads because we're like, well, the response rate on the text are higher than emails. The open rate is higher and all of that is true. But you probably notice that the replies, the engagement, the open rates of your text has slightly starting to decrease. And that you don't know why, it's likely not your CRM's problem. It's likely that the carriers or some third party who's actually, um, you know, in between you and the receiver of your text, um, some of those companies out there are, are actually restricting your text from going through in some cases because you don't have unsubscribe or proper opt-out language in that text. And that, that's kind of what's going on that's made it tougher. I'll give you one example, then we're going to kind of chime in together. And that is, imagine if you have an autoresponder. You're paying for PPC leads. Your PPC lead comes in, you capture a new lead, and you're not available, so you have the autoresponder responding. And that the first text that goes out from the autoresponder, it's going to be required that it has opt-out or unsubscribe language. And that in it's the first text, you're going to be like, hey, thank you for visiting our website. I'm tied up right now. You know, please let me know if you need anything. I'll give you a call later. By the way, feel free to opt out or hit stop if you no longer want to receive the text. Now, you don't even have a relationship with this person. This is an autoresponder sending that text. The amount of stops that you're going to get or you're getting right now is going to go through the roof. But as soon as they get stopped and that and that new lead captured and within seconds, they've already stopped and disabled themselves from receiving texts from your system. 
and that challenge and that and that challenge especially for agents that don't make calling their leads first and that our number one priority all right abe that's my setup um what can you add to that as a setup and we'll just kind of start diving into the conversation because i think we what I, what i hope to do is we identify a problem and we start talking about a solution and leave our audience with solutions and that yeah i mean that's a great setup greg and, and this is an issue that's been happening yeah. Right. So uh, the, we hear so many complaints all like because obviously we work with a lot of agents all around the country. And the biggest complaint is people are just not picking up the phone. And that conversation seems to be growing. It's like month after month, it's getting tougher and tougher. Um, you have agents that are using like dialers, like a mojo dialer or something, and, and they're tracking the number of calls that they make uh, relative to how many people are picking up. And that number seems to be going down. So what's happening right now with the... Uh, and again, it's not the CRM, just like you said, it's, it's the whole, the, the phone industry. Okay, yeah. so that went through the evolution that the email uh, service went through, which means they're getting smarter at filtering out spam because they just went nuts. Like, I mean, all the robocalls people are getting, all the, the mass text messaging people are getting, it was, it was bound to happen. It, it was inevitable. Yeah, and that's, that's what's happening right now. And it's not just real estate, it's everything. It's just anything having to do with phones and deliverability of text messages and robocalling. Um, even just telemarketing, even if you're not a robocaller, just all those calls are being filtered heavily, every uh, heavier and heavier every single day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know we we've never been uh, fans of robocalling and, and and stuff like that. I haven't even been a fan of dialers. I mean, that's been you got those were just like I don't know, 10, 15 years ago when I was really focusing on stuff like that. And so I think it's been slowly, you know, transitioning, um, you know, to uh, I guess it's been slowly transitioning to the point now where the consumer's lashing back and putting pressure on whether it's the phone carriers, the the, the servers for the emails, the the in in between, um, you know, uh, you know, I keep saying in between because I I don't really know what those are called, but like a Twillo and that type of thing, you know, all of these people are getting very tight on what they're allowing to go through their systems, probably because of litigation and, and whatnot, and also I think let's just. Let's just think in my mind, or I think in my mind, they're trying to protect the consumer. Like a lot of you have gotten texts that you're like, I get a text every day from some people trying to sell me health insurance. I just, and I, and it's crazy. Every time I say stop, I get another text and stop. I get another text. It's like they, they have these rotating numbers, I'm assuming. And, um, and it's annoying. I can't get rid of them. And at some point, I think people are getting tired and they're calling their, their phone carrier and say, look, if you don't stop this, from going through, I'm going to change my service and I'm going to go with Verizon instead of T-Mobile or, or, or instead of AT -T, AT and T. So, and that the, they're getting pressure, and that and and so they're putting in restrictions, and that I whether this is good or bad, that's insignificant, and that and that, but it's real. And that I'm hearing, I'm in in, in different mastermind uh, 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 groups or different uh, Facebook pages um, that are exclusive to different CRMs. And I'm hearing everybody talk about how their emails are not going through and their texts are not going through. So I guess, you know, and that what do we do about this, Abe? I mean, if, if, if that's been the major form of communication, then what do you what do we do? And that I, I think what, what you have to do is, is number one, ease off of automation, right? So the autoresponders, as you mentioned, first thing, you know, first thing in this, uh, on this call was um, the autoresponders, and then both of our opinions have to go. Like yeah. that cannot be the, the first attempt to read somebody cannot be automated. Okay, we have to go back. I think that has to be the first step. We have to go back to the human level. We have to be a, a manual phone call that we actually reach out to these people. It can't be an autoresponder because what's going to happen is, is if the phone, and the phones are getting smarter. So it's not just the, the, the people complaining, the technology is getting smarter. Like right now, you can filter out, like I can tell my iPhone right now, okay, I don't want any text messages from anybody that's not in my database or in my, in my uh, contacts, right? So it can filter out. You've got spam blockers. You've got all these different things. The so technology is getting better. So we have to revert back to what always worked, which was the one-on-one -on -one connection. So- you get rid of all responders, you get a lead. First thing you do is pick up the phone and call them manually. And that, yeah. And so, I, you know, I've, and we've been saying, I know I've been, I've saying, and I think you agree that we, we haven't really 
we've been telling people don't use autoresponders. And the reason why we've been saying don't use autoresponders even before this conversation is because people can detect, can detect that it's not genuine, that it's not authentic. And I always thought the first connection that you make with somebody needs to be authentic. It needs to be real. And if it's real and authentic, you're more likely to build a relationship. And if you build a relationship and then you send them a text in, in, in five days from today, even if it has, you can set, uh, type in stop or unsubscribe or whatever. Even if it has that, the chances of them and that out of receiving your text are less if you've started the relationship with a live call. Yeah. That's critical. It is critical. And you cannot do that with an autoresponder. I'm telling you, I hear all these people in these forums, Abe, and I'm um, saying like, um, oh my gosh, you know, well, we need to come up with a better tech script. Uh, yeah. No, you, you need to, like Will said in the Facebook page just a moment ago, <laughs> we need to go old school and actually really make connections with people. The, the funny thing is the consumer's gotten so much so smart. Like, I'm sure some of you out there have, have texted somebody and they replied stop. And it could have been a manual text. So they, they've gotten trained to just reply stop to any text message. And it's going to stop like 90% of the text messages coming in. Right. So, so the consumer's getting trained on this kind of stuff um, just from just being bombarded with calls. So, yes, the, the first attempt has to be a manual phone call one-on-one. Yes. One hundred percent. Asset. And, and again, so here's a couple things that I believe is going to happen when we follow this advice. Number one, and that you are going to make a stronger connection. You're probably going to set more appointments, and that we're going to convert more leads by making the phone call. Because all of us have been hiding behind the technology. Well, now all of a sudden, everyone that's been hiding behind this technology, oh. It's kind of like, uh, you know, it, when the tide goes out, you see who's swimming naked. Well, we're going to see who's swimming naked now. When the technology gets stripped away, it's going to see which agents are going to be able to go out there and still figure out how to keep their business moving. Because there are a lot of people, Abe, that they're just using spam texting and spam emailing as their form of lead generation. And they, they are panicking right now. And I would be panicking if that's what we were doing. That's not what we do, but I understand I would be panicking. So number one is to make the call. When you first get an online lead, make the call. They opted in and that it, they, they hit a button. They gave you their information. They opted in. So you can make a call because they've opted in and that, and that for a lead. Um, the other thing that I think people are um, are worried about, Abe, is like, well, you know, I've got this big database and that in fewer of my emails that my drip campaigns are being delivered and they're worried about that. So let me share you with you what my thoughts are on database in the future. And that and that and that has let me go backwards first. we built databases and we built databases based on people that we had connection to already. We already had a connection, so we were going to enhance our relationship with our connections by putting them in a database and systematically dripping on them with automation and that people that we already had and that had tremendous results and that with growing production and growing our business by doing that. And then I think what happened is the industry got a little bit loose. Then all of a said, well, that seems to work. What if I just upload a thousand people to the database of random people? And I just spam them with texts and emails. And that, and that, and that became something I believe agents that became very popular in the industry. We went from focusing on a quality database and that's on the quantity of a database. And when we focus on quantity, we also moved from and that authentic content to one size fits all email blast. And that, so a mistake or something that I feel we're gonna have to reverse is we have to go back to as an industry, focus on building a quality database and that, and that quality database and that focus on building content that's actually relative or relevant. And that, and that either the current times and that 
relevant to your marketplace. But going back to what Abe said is giving value. So people do not opt out if they experience value from what you're sending. And that, but it's going to be hard for you to get masses of amounts of people to experience value. So we need to get deep, go deeper on a smaller database versus broader on a larger database. Thoughts on that, Abe? Yeah, absolutely agree on that. So if you're a brand new agent, that's easy, right? You're starting from scratch, build a database, focus more on quality than quantity, build it right, segment. And now if you're out there and you've been in the business a while, or you, you, you accumulated a big database, look, we're not saying throw it away, but yeah. you, you need to really dive in and segment it. So, so research shows year after year between six to 8% of, of everybody that owns a home is going to be selling in the next 12 months. So you need to know which six to eight percent in your database is selling in the next twelve months. So you need to dive in, filter those people out, and kind of segment them on their own. So you at least have a database within a database, and then really focus in on those six to eight percent of the people and and give value and connect with them. Uh, so th I mean that's something that that has to be done. Uh, another thing that I think needs to be done, Greg, is once you make the contact with that person, right? So instead of an all responder, you call somebody, you make that contact with them. And you, you have to connect with them, of course, okay? But you've got to get them, get yourself into their cell phone. So one of the things I always do is like, look, as soon as we talk, we have a good conversation, we make the connection. I'm like, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to text you from my personal cell phone, assuming I called them from a different line. If I called them from my cell phone, I'm just going to say, look, I'm going to text you my full contact info. Please just save this in your phone. So you want to get in their cell phone as a contact. Now that helps eliminate a lot of the this this uh, being uh, sent to junk later on, being sent to spam, and it also creates the beginning of that connection. If they're willing to add you to their contact list, they must have at least liked something that you said. Yeah, I agree. So what I you know you said this the other day and and yeah. that and I, and I and I liked it, but I like it even more now that I'm hearing you say it again because you know I, I think of myself anytime I receive a text and just about every text. Every actually every text that I've received so far since 5 a.m. was my first text that I received. Every text that I've received so far today, um, it's been from somebody that I have saved into my phone. I've received no random text, meaning I've seen received no text from anyone so far today that hasn't been plugged into my phone. And so I'm way more likely, I, like the fact, the likelihood that I'm ever going to hit stop. And that subscribe to somebody, to one of my contacts, that's not going to happen. And that say stop to when, when, as soon as I see a text come in from 910-421-1234, I'm immediately thinking, who's this? And that whole thing, is, who's this? I'm, I'm almost like you better prove that you're legit. Just before I even app on the text and read it, I'm already thinking this is spam and that ought to save contact. So I really like what you're saying. I think that's a, 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 a huge solution. So I guess, Abe, what, how would we do that? Like, Look, how would we ask that? Well, let me, let me go a little bit further on that too, Greg. So the first time you text somebody on your phone um, and you're not in their contact, on the bottom of the message, it'll say report junk. And so that- the, the, When I said the technology is getting smarter and smarter, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So it'll say report junk. Now, if that person replies, that no, that message no longer pops up anywhere, right? So, like I said, I spoke to you today. I said, "Look, Greg, you know it's great talking to you. Look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop you my contact information. I'm going to text that over to you right now from my personal cell phone. This is the best way to reach me. Uh, a lot of times I'm out of the office in my car or whatever, but this is the best way to reach me. So please just save this number in your phone. Anything you ever need, feel free to call or text me at any time. So then I'll text it to them. That message comes up, report junk. They don't. They reply back, got it." They save me in their phone. Now, what's going to happen? I text them three months from now. It's not going to pop up as, as report junk because we've already communicated. And they save me in their phone and they see it's Abe. Just like you said, if you see someone in your contacts show up as a text message, number one, you're not going to report it as spam. Number two, you're more likely to look at it and reply to it. Yeah. Now, if I don't talk, if I don't do that right now, if I don't get myself in your cell phone and we have a great conversation, you don't hear from me again for three months. And I text you for myself on three months from now, you're not gonna know who it is. That report junk pops up. You might just hit it just for the sake of I don't remember who Abe is anymore. So the moment you make that first connection is when you've got to get 
in there as a contact. Make that initial connection and get in there as a contact. Man, we've all got to do this. We've all got to do what Abe just said. And you know what? You're right, Abe. Like in three months, if you were to text me and, I, and, and I've received 10 other spam texts from real estate agents, I'm thinking you're just one of them. I, it's going to be so hard for re- me to remember that we actually had a previous connection. So that's brilliant. You know, one of the things that you can do is he gave you a script. I'll just take another run out of script and just say, hey, Abe, you know what? Uh, before we get off the phone, I just wanted to mention one thing. I'm going to send you that information that you're requesting. But can you also save me in your contacts? It's Abe Sopo or it's Greg Harrelson. Save me in your, your, your contacts. I know there's probably a lot of real estate agents that send you a lot of spam and I'm not one of those agents. So I just want to make sure that you have me saved so you know, um, you know that it's, uh, it, I'm not one of them. I, I'm, not, I'm not sending you a bunch of junk. You could just say something like that. Make the attempt. If you make the attempt, not everybody is going to save you in their contact, but I promise you more people will save you as a contact if you ask them to than if then we'll save you as a contact if you don't ask them to. That's and that gonna, I know that'll prove to be factual. Okay. And if yeah. they don't save you on the spot, guess what? They're not going to save you three months on the road. You're automatically going to be spammed. So you, you got to do it up front. Yeah, yeah you got to go for it. You got to go for it and start doing this now. The other thing is, is I always, I, I fall back sometimes to like things that I've heard and, and uh, with Gary Vee. And I think I've got the, there's the book right there. I've got a book from Gary Vee, Gary Vaynerchuk called Jab, 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 uh, Right Hook. And we got to go back to this concept. And now jab, 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 right hook. For those of you that are not familiar with the concept, in boxing, jab, jab, jab. You're setting up your opponent and softening them up so you can send a right hook and knock them out. That's a boxing, that's boxing terminology. Well, in marketing, it's really like we could, we could, uh, we could change those words to give, 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 ask. And that, and that, and that, make sure. And that your first call and that your first tech and that giving them something and that I, I'm going to make this one up because I know people are not in my mind. I know people are not going to hit spam on me or junk on me if I do this and that and that call somebody. Hey, I'm going to send you a text when we get off the phone. I, I'm going to work on setting up the appointment tomorrow at two. So plan to meet me at two at that location. In the meantime, I'm going to also send you a text real quick and just send you a list of some other properties that are that are available and it'll be in the link. So make sure when you get that, save me in your phone. Don't hit the 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 stop. Um don't hit this don't don't type in stop because you won't be able to get these uh th- those deals, but just please go ahead and 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 uh just know that I'm going to send that to you. So if they know that you're sending them something of value, the likelihood and that they're going to reject you, mark you as spam, mark you as uh, junk or whatever they'll do, tap and stop is a lot lower. We got to go back to giving and that value. We got a little loose as an industry. We're like, ah, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll just send, you know, text out to this group of people and I'll just ask them all, when do they plan on, on, on buying? Are you still buying this year? Not a bad text. It's just that text is going to get a high stop uh, uh, ratio. And that text that would be better probably right now is like, hey, I'm not sure if you're still buying, but just in case I wanted to send you a link so, to some available foreclosures. <laughs> you think they're going to hit junk and spam if you actually send them a link to available foreclosures in your market? Now, some people can give me backlash and say, Greg, oh, I don't want to work with people that just want to work foreclosures, blah, 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 or there are no foreclosures. It was a hypothetical to get across the point. I could have, I guess I could have used this example. Hey, here's a link. And as soon as you text it or, or click on the link, I'm going to download $100,000 or $5,000 into your account. Like it's a give. It's just a hypothetical. It's an example. People are just going to, they're going to appreciate you giving them something. And if they know that you're the person that that's constantly giving them value, Versus trying to take their value. How do you take value away? You take their time away from them and that will give them anything in return. And that's what we've been doing with our communication. We've been takers as an industry. We've been taking people's time. We've been demanding their time and that giving them any value in return. Now we need to uh, uh, flip this switch is that we need to give our time in the form of value. And that, and that game has changed and that, and that they're going to, and, and let me tell you, 
there will be a lot of survivors and that a few people that won't actually change and they're going to suffer. And that there'll be nobody that can just sit here and ignore what's going on in our industry right now. And that, and that, and that thoughts. Yeah, the, the, the ratio of give to ask should be three to one, if not four to one. Like you shouldn't like, I, I try to never, ever ask someone if they're looking to sell or buy back-to-back -back messages. And it's so easy when you see CRM right now. You keep notes. And if you know the last message that went out or the last call was asking if they want to sell, then make sure the next one's something different. Even if it's just about the mortgage rates. Even if it's like, hey, have you paid? I just want to make sure you're paying attention to the mortgage rates. They're down a point and a half in the last uh, three months. Just want to make sure you knew that. Just something like that. Give them some sort of information. The news article you saw about the housing. Anything at all. Other than just, hey, just want to check back and see if you're ready to look at property or if you're ready to sell. Like you can't just go back to that over and over. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, Abe, I think that we've, uh, we've hit on this subject pretty good. We went pretty deep on it. I hope those of you that are listening, you found some value in, in, in this. And, uh, and, and for those of you that are listening on the Level Up podcast for the first time, hit subscribe. Uh, don't hit stop. Hit subscribe. If you've actually experienced some value and just ignore me, if you actually feel like Abe and I are not delivering value. Um, and those of you that are on the real, our, our real estate sales solutions, Facebook page, thank you for tuning in. If you have questions, feel free to uh, put them in the comment section and we will get to those questions. And um, for those of you that don't know, Abe and I have a coaching company called real estate sales solutions, but we have a coaching program called agent success Academy, where we dive deep into the different aspects that are necessary to know and understand to build your business at a high level. And so these are conversations that we have, but we go much more deep. We also open up the hood and kind of give you our ideas on what we're doing in order to, to navigate through the changing markets and, and, ho and help in and hopes to help you all. So uh, there'll be a link, you know, in, uh, you know, below for Agent Success Academy. Feel free to check us out. We'd love to, uh, you, for you to join us. Abe, thank you for a great Level Up podcast episode and safe travels. And we'll see you soon. Sounds good. Take care.